characters, duplicitous characters like that in the royal family? Oh, oh let me think. Do we, do we have something to do with a martel, you know? Uh, yes, peas of the same pod. And I think they have exploited similar talents to arrive where they have arisen at. And there's no such word as arisen except where they're concerned, because they're so pretentious. <laughs> well, yes, you, you've uh, written a compelling book all about Meghan Markle. So you don't see her marriage to Harry as a happy accident? Well, I think she's very calculating, and I think that if he had not been Prince Henry of Wales, she wouldn't have given him two minutes, much less the length of time she intends to give him. And notice how dexterously she moved him from the royal family to California, a community property state, so that what happened with Sarah York will never happen with her. Mm -hmm. She has clearly decided that she wasn't going to give her time or her energy to the British people or serving humanity when she could serve her financial interests in a community property state where in the event of a divorce, she gets a whopping 50 percent. Uh, do you think she was ever committed to being a serving member of the royal family? Well, it depends. Yes, of course, she was very committed to being self-serving, but only self-serving. Uh, public service, not a chance. This is a woman who, in my opinion, everything is calculated and it all comes down to status and bucks and attention. And, and what do you think is next for this young woman? She's got her prince. She's got her mansion in California. She's got the Netflix and Spotify deals. Uh, do you think she has fulfilled her ambitions at this point? No, I think, in fact, you know, first of all, I've been reliably informed that the figures that have been quoted, and I've said it all along, were kind the sky. You know, Netflix and Spotify have not given them anywhere near the amount of money that they would like the world to believe. And also not only the world, but other potential slumps who are going to buy their lives uh, and buy their nonsense. No, I think that she is, she is in some ways on a very slippery slope. Shades of Rebecca Vardy. You know, the chickens come home to roost when you are as artificial as these women are. Does Harry wake up one day in the next few years and just think to himself, God, what have I done? Or has he ha already had that thought? Well, you know, I have personal experience of relationships like Harry and Meghan's because my parents had a similar relationship. And even after the man realizes what the woman is, if he is too hooked on her, there's no escape because it's a form of addiction. So it really depends. If she gets something better, he will be toast. If she never finds anything better, she will reel him in as and when she needs to. That's the modus operandi of people who are very opportunistic, narcissistic and exploitative. And the men are usually quite besotted some of the time, you know, but it's also they, they, they are very successful, not only because they initially appear to be, as Johnny Depp said about Amber Heard, so perfect that it's too good to be true. But they also, once things start to go awry, they, they rely on variable reinforcement, you know, one minute nasty, the next minute nice. So the guy doesn't know whether they're coming or going. Uh, do you think that Harry has the moral courage to walk out at a certain point. Will he be able to escape this if it is a trap? Well, I said in my book that I was told the royal family's great fear 
was that Harry would actually end up doing something rather dramatic and final. And uh, so I think of the people who know him very well, there was the fear that his passions would prevail over the limited amount of sense that he has.